assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to dr romi lectures in our previous session we studied the regulation of glucocorticoid excretion today we are going to study the metabolic actions of cortisol hormone the main effect of cortisol is to increase your blood glucose level at the expense of breaking proteins and lipids so glucocorticoids are catabolic hormones they are released during stress they act on liver to increase gluconeogenesis up to 6 to 10 times gluconeogenesis means synthesis of new glucose the word gluco means glucose neo is new glucose and genesis means synthesis this takes place in liver and this occurs in between the meals and also when we are fasting in between the meals glucose is not being absorbed so the blood glucose level decreases and also glycogen which is stored in liver its level depletes so in order to increase glucose level when you are fasting or in between the meals what happens the proteins are broken down in the peripheral tissues especially in the muscles when proteins are broken down in the muscles then amino acids are released these amino acid level increase in our blood and amino acids are given to the liver in liver amino acids are converted into glucose so this is gluconeogenesis in this way your blood glucose level rises so hyperglycemia occur so this hyperglycemia by the action of cortisol is different from the hyperglycemia which occur due to glucagon glucagon mainly causes glycogenolysis which means breakdown of the stored glycogen in the liver but this hormone cortisol it mainly causes gluconeogenesis which is synthesis of new glucose from the non carbohydrate substances especially amino acids which are coming from the breakdown of proteins so in the liver cortisol induces the key enzymes of gluconeogenesis which are phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase fructose 16 bisphosphatase and glucose 6 phosphatase cortisol not only induces the enzymes of gluconeogenesis it also indirectly inhibits the key enzymes of glycolysis which are glucokinase phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase in this way the oxidation of glucose is decreased cortisol also decreases the uptake of glucose by the muscles and also by adipose tissue and in this way once again the blood glucose level will rise and this hyperglycemia will add to the hyperglycemia which is caused by gluconeogenesis it's important to note that because glucose is a very important fuel for our brain so this decrease in uptake of glucose does not occur in brain however the decrease in glucose uptake in our muscles and adipose tissue occurs because of decrease in glut4 carriers in this way cortisol by decreasing the glut4 carriers in muscle and adipose tissue has anti insulin effect or it causes insulin resistance and the very high levels of cortisol if they are chronically increased for example in cushing syndrome can cause diabetes mellitus and this kind of diabetes is called as adrenal diabetes or steroid diabetes so when hyperglycemia occurs because of gluconeogenesis and also by decrease uptake of glucose by the peripheral tissues this increases the release of insulin just like glucagon so it means cortisol and glucagon both can increase the release of insulin because they cause hyperglycemia so this kind of release of insulin is called as compensatory insulin release so when blood glucose level rises the extra glucose is converted into glycogen and this glycogen is stored in liver and kidney this is by increasing the activity of glycogen synthetase enzyme this is an essential step because brain needs glucose as an essential fuel but brain cannot store glycogen so the storage of glycogen after hyperglycemia is increased in our liver and kidneys and the same glycogen it will be broken down when required by the action of glucagon and epinephrine it's important to note that cortisol also potentiates the glycogenolysis which is caused by glucagon and epinephrine so that during times of uh, fasting and also stress when brain needs glucose so by the breakdown of the stored glycogen glucose can be stored released by the action of glucagon and epinephrine and it is provided to the brain now let's talk about the effects of cortisol on protein metabolism cortisol causes proteolysis in our skeletal muscle this releases amino acids by the protein breakdown for example alanine these amino acids through the blood circulation reach to liver and amino acids are, are used for gluconeogenesis for synthesis of new glucose amino acids they are also used for synthesis of new proteins in our liver everywhere in our body the protein synthesis is decreased this is because cortisol hormone decreases the entry of amino acids into the peripheral 
cells just like it decreases the entry of glucose into the peripheral cells but because it increases the entry of amino acids which are coming from the proteins into the liver cells it increases protein synthesis for example plasma proteins which are synthesized by the liver are increased protein synthesis in the peripheral tissue is decreased but the protein synthesis in liver is increased and also at the same time it causes increased protein breakdown especially in muscles this is why this causes muscle weakness some people who are having chronically increased cortisol level for example in Cushing syndrome they have weak muscles and it sometimes it may become difficult for them to stand up from a sitting position so the amino acids which enter into liver for gluconeogenesis their amino groups are removed and amino groups are used for synthesis of urea so in this way cortisol increases urea genesis and increased nitrogen will be lost in urine in the form of urea so it causes a negative nitrogen balance now let's talk about the effects of cortisol on lipid metabolism cortisol has lipolytic effect which means it breaks down lipids especially triglycerides these triglycerides when they are broken down are converted into free fatty acids which through blood circulation enter into liver and in liver fatty acids are oxidized these free fatty acids because the level increases they have anti-insulin effect and they divert metabolism towards increase in gluconeogenesis and decrease in glycolysis and these fatty acids their oxidation is increased in our muscle so it means muscle will use fatty acids as a source of energy instead of using glucose increase in the fatty acid oxidation can cause increase in ketone body production and this can cause ketosis especially in diabetes mellitus as cortisol also decreases the entry of glucose into the adipose cells so there is less formation of glycerol 3 phosphate and in this way the reacidification of glycerol 3 phosphate with the fatty acid to make triglyceride will be decreased hence the fat storage in the adipose tissue will be decreased by the action of cortisol hormone however chronically increased level of cortisol as occurs in Cushing syndrome causes central obesity this causes a redistribution of fat which means the fat from peripheral parts of body moves towards the center so there is central or trunkal obesity this increase in body weight is not because of growth effect which means there is no net increase in anabolic effect or there is no net protein synthesis because cortisol is anti-growth hormone the cause of obesity in case of uh, Cushing syndrome is not increased rate of lipid metabolism this is because of insulin resistance which increases eating habits and food intake is increased so there is centripetal fat distribution which occurs in the central axis of the body so when more fat is deposited in the face the patients have face which is called as moon face and extra fat which is deposited in the supraclavicular region or in the posterior part of the neck this is called as buffalo hump and increased fat deposit in the abdominal region can cause pot belly or pendulous abdomen moreover there is also increase in triglyceride level in the blood and also hyper cholesterolemia which can increase the risk of atherosclerosis and then cardiovascular diseases so just to summarize the metabolic effects of cortisol hormone its main effect is to increase your blood glucose level and this increase in glucose level occurs because of gluconeogenesis the raw material for this gluconeogenesis they come from the breakdown of proteins um, which are amino acids and also there is decrease in the uptake of glucose by the muscles and also adipose cells so both of these effects decrease in glucose uptake and gluconeogenesis increase your blood glucose level this increase in blood glucose level is important so that glucose can be spared for our brain which uses glucose as only source of energy however energy source in our muscles shifts from glucose to lipids which means lipolysis is increased in the muscles triglycerides are broken down there is more formation of fatty acids and those fatty acids they provide energy to our muscles Moreover, lipolysis is also increased in the adipose tissue and there is a redistribution of fat from the peripheral parts of the body towards the center, especially in chronically elevated level of the cortisol hormone. This also causes insulin resistance and high levels of cortisol as it occurs in Cushing syndrome can cause diabetes mellitus called as adrenal diabetes or steroid diabetes. In our next lecture, we will study the role of cortisol hormone in stress and also its anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive role. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time with another video.